Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're coming to you from the offices of Cumulo in Seattle, Washington. You know, as we talk to IT professionals, one of the things they're struggling with is just managing the scale and performance demands being placed on them on unstructured data. And while all that's happening, they're not being able to scale their IT staffs accordingly. And so that creates a level of complexity that really needs to be overcome. So you've got three real problems, scaling capacity, a, a increased demand for performance, and then trying to keep things as simple as possible. Joining me on the light board to talk about that is Tommy Unger. Tommy is a data scientist with Cumulo. Tommy, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So let's jump into this. What, what are you guys doing to help customers with these various struggles that they're having with unstructured data? Well, Cumulo has a scale-out data storage system that uh, basically is built for scale. And what that means is we handle billions of files, we handle uh, terabytes of data, up to petabytes of data, and of course we put it all together in a, in a high-performing package. Now, scale-out, that means that we've got sort of a clustered approach like you have drawn up here, correct? Right, yeah, scale out means you, you start with a, and you, you start with always more than one node because you want to be able to handle uh, nodes down, you want to be able to handle the loss of hardware. So you, yeah, scale out basically means you plug in four devices and then if you need more capacity or, or performance, you just plug in something else and it's a single namespace and you're off to the races. Now that starting point of uh, uh, more than one node is important from the resiliency standpoint. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you guys are doing from a resiliency standpoint? Yeah, so um, the, basically we leverage a block system at a, at a lower level, which, which means we're storing things in, in chunks of data that lets us spread it across all of these nodes and across more interestingly all of these HDDs and SSDs. And if you lose any single one of these things or a few of them, we'll just keep going and you'll plug in a new one. You'll, you'll pull it out, plug in a new one, and you won't lose any data. We call that system, or well, we don't call it, it's a standard term of erasure coding that sort of... Uh, manages that for you. Okay, and so that kind of handles the, uh, the petas, petabyte scale uh, kind of needs of people. Talk a little bit about uh, the performance, and I know you guys are doing some intelligent uh, caching type of techniques, so talk about how you're delivering the type of performance that you're able to get out. Yeah, and so think about our system, or I think about our system as super fast memory, SSD kind of fast, and HDD relatively slow. And what we want to do is, is deliver optimal performance and what that means is you either leverage lots of HDDs or you leverage really fast uh, infrastructure. And what we do is the, there's, there's two main ways we, we kind of handle that. And we do that via caching as well as some predictive kind of prefetching. And so okay. what, what caching I think of as is caching kind of moves data between SSD and HDD um, and between memory and SSD, but really it all kind of goes together. You can also go from here straight to here. But when a user asks for information, they would basically get their, it would kind of go down through the system and we would pull it back to the fastest media and they would get it back to the tune of dozens of gigabytes a second of throughput. Okay, and so if I'm a user, uh, let's say, accessing a, a terabyte movie or something like that, what's that process look like? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, the idea is you can imagine a, a, a terabyte-sized thing would be spread out across your whole system, across all the nodes, across dozens if not hundreds of hard drives. And if we, we could ask every hard drive one by one, okay, give me what you have. But what we do is once we know what they're going to be reading, we, we reach out across all of our hard drives, get that data up into memory, and when the customer actually does ask for it, they get it back super quickly, and you can end up with really low latency, really high throughput. And I would think that to, to do that really has to be, or to be efficient in that, you'd have to really have that built in to the file system almost from day one, right? That's not something you can add on really, right? Right, right. Um, yes, we, we've, everything we've built, whether it's our analytics, which we'll get to in a minute, but these, this predictive prefetcher is built into the system. And what it means is if, for example, let's say you, weren't, you were reading that video, but actually went and read something random. We also kind of keep track of those things and say, you know, let's not pull back all of this person's video up to this really fast, but kind of low, um, low sized media. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's just shut things down until they start asking in a predictive pattern that we can uh, give to them. Okay. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about is writes. How, how do writes flow through this? Right. 
Um, so writes, when data comes in, all data comes in through the SSDs. It's the fastest media for providing some sense of protection and resiliency. Sure. We, all the data comes in through the SSDs. This is a, the, the numbers that I have in my head. This is about 5% of your system. This is about 95% of your system. And this is a fraction of a percent. And, and so you can imagine, well, gosh, if I need to fill up my whole petabyte scale, I'm going to have to put things onto HDD. We'll, we'll tear things down to HDD. If you're starting to read things, maybe we'll bring things back up to SSD. But all things come through that fastest storage of the SSD. And, and I think that the use of uh, hard disk drives is also going to help with uh, maintaining costs, right? Which kind of gets back to that petabyte, petascale. If, if you had a, a petascale type of with just SSDs and memory, that'd be like a really expensive system. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and as much as the industry likes to talk about uh, SSD re approaching HDD prices, there's still uh, a decent order of magnitude difference between these things, and yeah. our customers like that um, price performance of a, of a more hybrid architecture. Well, and again, especially at scale, right? Because even a, yeah. a small difference on a per drive basis across a thousand. Yeah, it multiplies out. Yeah, exactly, that makes sense. Um, so I, I think that covers the intelligent caching aspect. Let's talk a little bit about real-time analytics. What are you guys doing there? So back to that built-in at the at the foundation. We, we've built in real-time analytics in, in a few ways. Number, number one, it's very easy to know. Do you have a billion files? Where are those files? What's the paths? And you know this question without having to actually scan that whole file system. We've built a, uh, a system in place that keeps that um, that data accounted for, and if I say how many files are in my users' directories across my hundreds of users, we're going to tell you exactly what that number is within seconds okay. or, or milliseconds. That's the, the foundational uh, analytics for capacity. Then, of course, there's analytics for activity. That high throughput, that 10 gigabytes a second, or that, that 10 gigabytes a second rolling in or being read by users, we also have the activity analytics built in which for very little to no overhead, you know exactly who's reading what, where they're reading from, what IP address, what path, and, and what the impact is on your storage system. So, so I would think that would really help with uh, like problem resolution and things like that. If, if all of a sudden you know things start to uh, jam up on you, you can see that a big job is happening or something like that pretty easily, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, they, the customers are constantly raving about our analytics and leveraging the fact that you can go right into the UI and know instantaneously what it is with kind of with little to no impact to your cluster's performance. And, and I think that's really important because, you know, while we're putting more demands on performance and capacity is growing like crazy, the IT staff isn't growing at the same pace or if at all. And so keeping things simple and easy to manage becomes critical, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, the simplicity is key. The, the, the software managing all this is key. And so we think of our, our system as leveraging the software to make it easier for those system administrators to manage their system. And, and going back to that, what, what would a system administrator want to know? Maybe they want to know every operation on their system in the form of an audit trail. Right. We have that, once again, built into the system with, with, with minimal impact. And you can just send that off to the, the environment of your choosing so you know exactly what's going on in your cluster at any time. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I can even just think from a simple level how many, I can't tell you how many times we've talked to CIOs and I'd say something like, well, how many files do you guys have? And the, I don't know, is the number one answer, right? So yeah. the fact that they can know instantly is huge. Yeah, we, we, we really like to think of making our customers look good to their bosses and, and to their management. It's, it's, it's a great feeling when everyone looks good and, and knows what's going on in their system. Okay, well, that's great, Tommy. So let's, before we wrap up, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, Cumula, what you guys do. But before we get to that, we've had this guy in the video. Why don't you explain what he's up to? This is the, the Grump Quat. Uh, that would be a play on, on Kumquat and Grumpy. I think of him as kind of an, making sure we're doing a good job, looking at us a little bit critically, but uh, overall just a, a, a funny character. He was designed by a guy in Seattle, uh, the, the Oatmeal, who does a, a comic here. And uh, he, you'll, you'll see him from time to time in the, the Cumulo materials. And, and you know maybe, maybe one day we'll see him in real life, who knows? <laughs> so all right, but, uh, then talk a little bit about Cumulo. What, you guys are certainly not a, a startup anymore. You've been at this for a little while. Talk yeah, about yeah, so Cumulo is now, I've been here for five years. I think the, the founders have been here since uh, for seven years. And we're a, a scale-out data storage company where we've, our customers span the spectrum of 
producing mo movies, feature films, animations, to large-scale universities, research institutions. It's funny, I can actually tell people we're helping cure cancer. Like, uh, the, our customers are researching and, and cool. working on those problems. That's awesome. And, and I would assume most customers are either in the very high terabytes and probably most in the petabyte range? Yeah, yeah. Our, our, our customers are, are very large-scale. It's, it's a question of... How much can we? How much can we give them, and how much uh, hardware is there for them to use? Great. Well, thanks for joining us, Tommy. Yeah. Thanks. I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.